So we were able to make our base arm, but now we need a center base to boolean everything together onto. Let's work with that in the video today. So let's start working on our chair base center by creating the same sketch that we created in our last part to cut the arm. This time we'll use it to add material. I'll select my XY plane and activate a sketch. I'll start by creating three lines like this. And of course, I'll make sure that this one is actually vertical. I'll create an arc. And I'll make sure that my arc center is vertical with the origin. And lastly, I can create a tangent arc and have it end up right on that endpoint. And also make sure that my arc center is horizontal with its endpoint. We can give this some dimensions now and I'll go with one inch here. I'll go with 0.5 inches here. I'll go with 3.75 inches. And we'll give this a radius of one inch. And we're able to recreate the last sketch that we were uh, doing in our chair arm. And now we can simply revolve this and add material. I'll select my axis here, just like that. Now I want to shell out the bottom of this, so I'll select this bottom face and use the shell option and I'll increase the thickness to 0.25. Now we're ready to add some arms. So I'm going to go with Boolean Unite and as we've done a Boolean already, this will be a quick review. And I'll open up my arm. <clears throat> From here I actually made these parts to share the same origin. So I've set this up to, all, to where all I need to do is run my mouse over the origin click and our arm is correctly placed. I'll anchor my part here. And then I can use a circular pattern because I wish to have five arms instead of just one. And so I'll select this as my uh, part to pattern. I'll give this five instances and I'll specify my center as this vertical axis. Now, as you can tell, we have five instances, but they're every 90 degrees, and I want five evenly spaced instances. So, of course, I'll go with this option instead. Now that my arms are added, I can simply accept the Boolean. And now we have a smoothly Boolean part. I'd like to add some features uh, that go on the bottom and the top to help the seat have strength and mate properly to other parts. So I'll grab my YX plane and we'll start creating another sketch. I'll have an angled line here. We'll go horizontal. And I think we'll look something like that. Yep, just like that. We'll start giving this dimensions here. I'll have this point one inch below my origin. At this point here, we'll go with something like 0.5. And then here to here, I'll go 0.785. From this bottom point to this sort of inflection point, I'll say one point 585 how about from here to here I'll again say 0.5 we'll give this a distance from the origin at 1.5 and then I can uh, select my dimension here we'll give this an angle of about three degrees and then I'll give this an overall height from the origin of say 2.5 and there we have it I'll go with the deactivated sketch, revolve once again around the vertical axis. And this gives us a place that we can put our riser into from up top. This gives us a place that we can add strengthening ribs from the bottom. Now I may also wish to have this go all the way through. So what I'll do is uh, I can I can of course do some kind of cut or loft cut, but I can do a remove face quite easily as well, if we wish to do it that way. And now I've got a chair uh, base that goes hollow all the way through. 
Let's create a sketch now on the underside and create some reinforcing ribs. And in this sketch, let's create a rib down here to help propagate the forces that will be coming through the arms. So I'm going to create a line and I'm going to grab the coincident constraint here and make this line coincident onto my origin and that way it'll always face the origin. We'll also make it coincident around this point. So this point on this circle and this point on this circle. We'll give this an angle. I'll call it an angle of about 22 degrees so that the rib is kind of aligned with the outside of our arm. I'll deactivate the sketch. I can go with a thin extrude. And I've got a thickness of 0.1 on one side, a thickness of 0.1 on the other side, giving us a total thickness of 0.2. And uh, instead of to depth, I'm gonna say to next. Uh, if I go with to depth, I bet we're gonna be sticking through the other side in a way that we don't want. Yes. So we'll just stop at next and that stops us from coming out where we don't want to. We're gonna say okay to that. I'll mirror that there. And then I can do a circular pattern of my mirror and my original extrusion. I can go with a series of five and then there's my center. So we've got support ribs, probably where the forces matter. We're gonna say okay on that. We also can add some support ribs up top if we think that those are necessary. So I'll select the YZ plane and activate a sketch. And I'll make a sort of triangular support looking feature. I have a vertical line here. And now we can start dimensioning. From the origin to this point, I can go a distance of say 1.85. From here to say my vertical axis, I can give that a dimension of about 97. From here to the origin, I can horizontally define that to be oh, about a distance of 4.6. Maybe between these two lines, I'll go with a, an, an angle of 24.5. The last thing we might want to ask, how do we define our height here? I'll start by taking this point and my origin, we'll call it 0.685. We'll deactivate the sketch. We'll do an extrude. We can extrude this from the mid plane and I'll say 0.185 might be a good thickness. And there we have a rib that will help support our chair base. So I can go with a circular pattern. Again, choose my center here. And we want five, of course. So we've got five support ribs. We can even add an intermediate support rib right there, if we would wish. And then the last thing that we'd also want to do is add fillets to help smooth this thing out. Right, so you can tell this arm was a separate part than this base, but because we Boolean them correctly, I can choose a radius and I can fill it the edge between them as though they were all the same part. So I'll leave it to you to fill it what you think is important to fill it. And we'll say that this is our chair base. And that's how we do it. Let's continue the office chair in the next videos.